you think you need to do these big things to have big results. The small things, the millimeter things become big things over time and they're more palatable for me. Hey friends, it is Dr. Patrice Butner Jackson again, but you know you call me Dr. PBJ. Listen, this series of women who define disruption is so good. Now I know it was supposed to be for March for Women's History Month, but we can't stop because I have more powerful women to introduce you to. So here we go. Let's keep going. So the woman Listen, hold on, because I need y'all, I need you to be in a space that you can receive all this love today. Because what I can guarantee you is when you leave this space with us today, you are going to know you are loved and you will know how valuable you are. I met this woman at a conference uh, last October. And as soon as I saw her, I knew there was something special about her. And you know how you don't want to stare. Like, you you don't want to be rude, but it was just something magnetic. I had no idea who she was. We were all waiting to go into a VIP event. I had no idea who she was, but it was just something about this woman. And then as we go through the event, and I noticed she's one of the panelists, and then the next day she's the host. Listen, and it's not even about those positions. I watched this woman love on every woman in that room, not just from the stage, but I'm talking hugs and compliments for everyone that came into her space. And I have been drawn to her love ever since. So without further ado, and she is so accomplished and we'll get into all of that. But before we get to her accomplishments, I need y'all to meet her heart. So I have the honor of introducing you all to Leah Valencia Key. Oh, Leah, thank you so much for being here with us. It's such an honor. I first like your opening is everything. Like I've been, I've kept it. I'm like, who's coming? Like I want to be sick. I was like, I want to hear this. Like, it, it's from your soul, and uh, mm -hmm. oh, I, just, I just love how you talk and everything. And then when you're introducing this person, I'm starting to cry. Like oh my god! So I'm already wrapped up. It's such an honor. Um, it's a blessing. It's a joy to have this time and moment with you and every heart that's listening. I'm I'm grateful to be here. My name is Leah Valencia Key. I I love to share who I am from a perspective of where I come from. Mm -hmm. And because I I feel like your journey is your power. And how, how, and I think we need to go all the way back to our journey because mm -hmm. it curates who we are. And my journey started in super humble beginnings in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. When I mean humble, I mean poverty. <laughs> I, mean, I was born in one of the most uh, crime ridden, violent areas of Philadelphia. And it was my mother, single mother, born uh, three children myself the youngest and my sister and my brother. And we were born into poverty. Uh, the only memories that I have in, in the beginning are uh, living in an under basement of someone's um, home in this neighborhood that was violence written throughout the streets, drug transactions on the corner, um, just just chaos and, and trauma around us. And then I like to say that moment went from poverty to destitute when my mother broke her leg in three places and she could no longer do the little work that she was able to do to afford that basement, one bedroom apartment for four people. And she's getting us back from school and there's a padlock on the door. And what that meant was this single mother with three children had no place to take her children. And I remember, I, I black out, I always share, I black out a lot of traumatic things, probably coping 
but there is things that I vividly remember and I remember, and I'm young, I will give you age perspective. I'm maybe to uh, second grade, third grade age. So I don't understand the dynamics, but what's really powerful is I understood feeling, I could feel, um, I could feel the pain that was happening right now, mm-hmm. looking at this lock on the door and then looking at my mother's face. I knew there was something tragic that had happened to the entire um, family. And that took us to a homeless shelter, woman's homeless shelter. And I love to paint that picture because if no one has experienced it, I'll show you what mine's look like visually. If you can imagine a gym room, a big room and cots. If anyone knows what a cot is, is these fold up metal beds. And these little cots are one foot away from each other, filling the entire room. And the mother only gets one cot to a family. So that means um, mothers and children are huddled on this cot, cot after cot, cot after cot, room filled with mothers. That's the trauma of it too. These these are, everyone's homeless in here. And so you hear crying and moaning and hopelessness and profanity and just everything that you could visualize as dark trauma going on around us. But I love to share one of the most uh, magical, I call them seeds, that was planted in my life from my mother's words. She looked down at us in the middle of this sorrow and she told her three children, um, your predicament does not determine your destiny. Come on. And and that was magical to me. I must admit I'm second or third grade. I don't know what she's talking about, (laughs) you know? I'm still hearing all of the crying and everything, but it, was implanted in my heart. And and so I, I have to share that because everyone that's listening, words are powerful. Come on. And they're seeds. They could be seeds of, of um, greatness or they could be seeds of destruction, however you decide to use them. And my mother planted the beautiful seed that I took in my heart and we stayed in the homeless shelter for several years So what had started to happen was I talk in third person and I laugh because some people don't like that. Little Leah of myself start to become my environment. So Mm -hmm. I start to become negative. I start to talk the way I heard everyone speaking. I start to fail literally in every class in school. If lunch had a grade, I was failing it because that's what I saw. And there, the second light moment, I love to express. Um, now, that, now I want, the first one was a seed because it was just mm-hmm. in my soul. This was a light moment because I feel like it, it turned on the light for my entire life. And I'm coming back to the homeless shelter from school and my mother standing at that front door. And, she, and when I greet, meet her, she asked me, um, one question with two parts. Do you want to be a follower or leader? Leader, Leah. And now I'm about fifth, sixth grade. So I'm still young and I don't understand what she's saying. And she continues and she explains, she says, because right now you're following. Mm-hmm. And what you're doing is you're going to follow and be exactly what you're following and see. So you, you can be that or Leah, you can choose to lead. You can choose to lead your life. You can choose to listen to the inner whisper and the inner light inside of you. And you can choose to lead all the way to your destiny, Leah. And now she said, you choose. And she walked away. And she blessed me with a light gift of choice. This miraculous (laughs) concept that's out in the world that I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. And I remember it being like a light bulb to me. Literally, um... I was exposed to what was true because I thought I had to be what I saw. Truthfully, people talk like that. I talk like that. They're not studying. I don't study. I thought that's what we do. And when my mother blessed me with the understanding that there is this inner voice inside, and I knew it was an inner voice, truthfully, because I never felt good doing these things. Uh. I always wanted something different. I always saw different things for me, but I thought that was just something. But when she exposed it, no, that was your, that's your inner light. That is your whisper of godly destiny. And all you have to do is choose it. Now she 
She didn't explain it was hard, but I guess that was for me to find out, right? But what I, what she did do is juxtapose that, do you want to be right here? Because that's what you were going to be. And I already knew it was clear I didn't want this. Mm -hmm. so this inner light that was new to me is a good choice to choose because I don't know what that has for me, but I'm sure it'll be different than this. And I'll mm -hmm. just like that. And I just start choosing, choosing, and choosing. Um, the next day, I went back to school and I asked my teacher, like, "How do I get better grades? How, how do I, how do I see beyond where I'm at?" And so I'll share it with anyone who's listening. First of all, under listening to inside of you, not outside of you. And I know it's really hard, and sometimes you don't know the difference. Mm. Um, but when you can get still and hear what God has for you. I, I call it God, but whoever you define that whisper as, and really just start to listen to what is for you, then the next question is to start asking questions out in the world and, the, and questions will be answered to you. And there'll be earth angels that will give you little, little keys that will help unlock the next parts of your journey. Oh, Leah, oh my gosh. Oh, there's so much to unpack here. First of all, I just want to honor your mom. I want to I want to take this moment and honor your mother, the woman who made the decision regardless of our circumstances, our trouble, what's going on around us right now. I am going to pour light into these children that have been given to me. Because in that circumstance, I'm sure there were many mothers in that same space that did not have light to share with their babies, yeah. not even shaming them. You can only give what you have. And sometimes the people who raised us just didn't have it to give. Sometimes they didn't have it to give. But there was something in your mother. There was something in your mother that caused her to travail in the midst of everything that seemed impossible and to continue to see light in her children and in the world. So I just, I want to stop and honor your mother and honor the way you honor her. Mm, thank you. Thank I want to honor the way you honor her because the truth is what you're walking in now, and we'll get to all of that, started with that seed. Absolutely. It started with that seed. So you are living in the manifestation of what she deposited in the earth. So I just have to, whew. That. Thank you. And, and so for every loving being that's listening, what seeds are you planting? Mm. What light can you find? And everyone's not going through darkness. So my story is not a story of, my story is a story of darkness, finding the light every moment of my life. Um, but maybe maybe you're in the light and want to find more light because that's yes. what God has for you, yes. right? So wherever you are, what seeds are you planting and what light are you seeking? And when you live in a, a sowing and a seeking moment, it's just a, it's a beautiful life because life overall is challenging. Mine is, yeah. but, and it don't stop. It keeps going. But when to, the way to make it beautiful and the way to look and say, oh my God, look, look at what I've been blessed with is to be in a seed message of just sowing love and beauty in the world beyond mm -hmm. whatever is the true predicament around it. Mm -hmm. And when you sow that in and you believe it so much and you seek light, it, it, it will shine for you. It, it has to, it it's has the story to. of my life and oh, we're all human. So I love being able to share my voice because it's a representation of everything that's possible for anyone who's listening. Yes, absolutely. And and when you talk about the light of choice, mm -hmm. 
Mm. Right. So then it started with a seed, but then she gave you this power. Right. She gave mm. you this light of choice to say, I know what you see around you, but I need to bring your attention to this light called choice yeah. that you actually get to choose. Right. There is actually another option. Mm-hmm. And I love that for this community to hear, because regardless of where your stage in life is right now, whether you feel like you are in the belly of the trouble or if you feel like it's fine, uh-huh. life is fine. It's OK. I'm good. It's I mean, fine. and I know I know. I know there's something whispering in my heart, but it's fine. That part is fine. That part. Just because you're fine doesn't mean it's not a destiny progressingly waiting for you, mm. right? Fine, fine is probably one of the most dangerous places. Peace is the beautiful place. Peace is different than fine. Yes, we start to define mm-hmm. right. Fine is is settling. I mean, it could be. I, I could do. I see different things for me, but right now, right, right here, it's fine. But peace is, is um, a, a tranquility of um, just being one with your human emotion and your surroundings, and and this is this is well in my soul. That's what Come peace on. is, and peace is ever growing in every level, and, and we should always seek peace in everything we do, even in even in the turmoil of life, finding peace in it, because um, that's where growth. Um, that's where love, that's where joy, all of it grows from a thing of peace. And I think it's an underserved word. It's an underserved emotion. We um, we never talk about living in a state of peace. Yeah. We're always supposed to be grinding, um, uh, pushing, um, striving, um, seeking. And, and all of those things are great if you can do it in peace but most of us do it in stress yes most of us do it in worry most of us do it in angst and anxiety that's not what god i call god or divine or whoever your higher power really has for you yeah all all of life should be in balance and in peace where it's really well in your soul even as you're growing and so just continuously looking for that peace but not being like it's fine because if there's something more for you go for it yes yes this peace you said peace is not fine i gotta highlight that because it's not it's not the same thing peace is also not comfort no hear me no always comfort Mm -hmm. and you can find peace even in the midst of the trouble as a matter of fact Finding peace in the midst of the trouble will help you find your way out yes. of the trouble. That's the way out. That's finding the way out. Peace in the midst of the discomfort, the 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 sorrow, the hardship, the tragedy. When you can, there will there may peace is also not reasoning. Mm. So people think that to to have peace, I need to understand why this happened. That's not peace. It could be peace. It, 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 it could be a way to find peace. But peace is a really, uh, um, it's this really phenomenon energy that, it, that you should always seek in the midst of everything where it's, it's well in your soul. Yeah. You know, like this is well in my soul. Maybe the storms are blowing, but it's well in my soul. And when something can be well in my soul, then I can now start seeking the light for the next way. But when it's not well, you're trying to deal with everything. When when it's not well in your soul, you're trying to acknowledge all the trauma and you're taking it on and it's chaos in your brain and it's uncomfortable and it's mm-hmm. unbalanced. We all know what that feels like. That's not peace. You can't find the light in that. It's very hard to. Maybe you, I'm nothing is can't. I don't believe in can't. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's all possible if you choose to. But a good way to find a next way is to find a way to say it as well. Even if you, and people are like, well, how, what are you talking about? How? 
yeah, even if it's the easiest thing is understanding that there's a greater source bigger than you. And I call it God, but whatever you want to define it, even if you say, God, I don't understand why. But I know that there is something different than this. Yeah. Yeah. And then you accept that, that I know you have something different from me. So now, please, there's where the question comes in. Show me, Show me. where I should go. Um, put the words in my mouth that I need to say. Put the dream in my heart. Put the vision in my heart. Um, draw the way out visually for me to see, God. And, and then that becomes peace. Because you know that you're getting a direction and you're seeking a direction because it's action attached to it. Yes, absolutely. When, when we say soul, mm -hmm. we're talking about your mind, your will, and your emotions. Ooh, right? So right? if you want to test, am I at peace? Check your mind, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Check your will, your decisions and your behaviors. And check your emotions. Mm -hmm. How does your heart feel? Not just the heart that beats, but the heart that feels you. It's a gauge to check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. What am I thinking? What are the thoughts that I'm thinking? Is there rest in my mind or is there toiling and fighting and confusion in my mind? Is there rest in my heart or is there toiling in my heart? Is there rest in my decisions and my emotions or am I wrestling concerning my decisions and, and my behavior? That's how you know if you're at peace or or if you're just complacent mm -hmm. or if you're just fine or if you are stuck there's a difference there's a difference between peace and giving up yes because you can't be peaceful when you give up your yeah. soul knows that there's more yeah. and the soul does not uh it doesn't erupt to torture you it mm -hmm. erupts to get your attention mm -hmm. it's an alarm system mm -hmm. the soul is an alarm system and it, it it's created to get your attention to let you know when you are disconnected from you oh this is so good oh thank you for the in peace, uh, mind, mind, and will, and emotions, and emo oh, so beautiful. Thank you for that. And I love what you said peace is not giving up, but I would say peace is giving it over and mm -hmm. up, meaning not giving up, I'm done, but peace is giving it over to a greater source bigger than you. And if you got to lift it up to give it over, then you're lifting it up and out of your spirit so that you can do the next move for you because you can't control it all. No. You're not in control of everything that life has for you, but you are in control of the next steps of how you handle it, of where your next direction is, what your next choice is. You do have the control of that, but what happens is when we're bound up, we start to give our control over and, mm -hmm. and, and the angst and anxiety take over. And so then what we find is we can't make a move. You're right. We can't make a decision where we get stuck in this way. Or like you said, then we just say, okay, well, I'm not going to do it at all. And I must admit every moment I'm giving up <laughs> in my head, right? Like, so let's keep it real. I There's two different types of giving up. You can still have peace <laughs> from my perspective and have the human action of saying, okay, I'm done. But but what, what peace and what determination and will, like you said, says, okay, I'll allow you to say that or even maybe a thought goes in your head. Mm -hmm. But then that inner will won't allow you to not make the next step. No. And and what giving up is not is making another step. Yes. It's, I call it millimeter movements. There, um, when I was, we didn't even get into that, but we, I got into the jewelry and creating jewelry and I never really took a real loving um, to, I never really looked at the ruler in, in such a way that now I look at measurements. And as I was as, uh, designing I start to understand the power of a millimeter. Mm. A millimeter is one of the smallest, it is the smallest measurement on the ruler. 
a metric. And and I start to realize if if you do one millimeter up, it's a whole different design. Mm. It's a whole different quality. It's 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 a whole different feel of design. And if you do one millimeter down, it's also <laughs> a whole different feel. And so I start to understand that in relationship to life, that all we need to do is do one millimeter in the direction of what our heart desires and it will drastically change our life and you won't see it right away. So I don't see a millimeter as drastic when I'm drawing it, right? Mm -hmm. But by the time the sample gets to me and I create two different ones and two different millimeters away from each other, they're drastically different. And that's what life is if you just take a millimeter, meaning the smallest action, because life is based on action. It's like, well, how do I gain the things that my heart desires? Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, is a peace. Well, then you need to do an action toward peace, right? And we're talking about just a superficial thing of peace. There's always has to be an action attached to something to see development happen and whatever it is. And that action can be a millimeter small. And I think what we start to say in the world is you think you need to do these big things to have big results. The small things, the millimeter things become big things over time and they're more palatable for me. And so I say, okay, if, if I'm seeking to keep going in my business when it's getting really challenging and, and I've made a give up statement, mm -hmm. but my will says, no, not so, um, then the next thing is, all right, well, what one millimeter movement do I do? Okay, the one the one millimeter movement I can do right now in, in my mindset is maybe all I do is just send an email. Yeah. Maybe all I do is just turn on a podcast like this. Yeah. Like that's so easy. Like just turn a podcast on to fill my soul with, because I know I'm, I'm yearning. The soul is almost, um, it's like the body. It hungers. The mind and the soul is like the body. So it hungers to be fed and you decide choice what you want to feed it. Mm. And what you feed it determines what you look like, right? So when I was in the homeless shelter, I was feeding my mind with all the negativity around me and my results were that, yeah. failing in class. And then, But now if I choose to feed my mind with beautiful podcasts like this, surrounding myself with people that I aspire, just their whole mindset is what I aspire to have, whether that be digital, just feeling my mind. I have no choice but to be sparked with another action, another millimeter movement, because somebody's going to tell me to do something in there, right? Someone will say, pick up a book, this book. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's how we grow in life. And, and that's my quest in the world is to just continuously radiate life in our life. Yeah. No matter what state we are in, that it is possible to find light and continuously be light. Absolutely. And being light is actually being what you desire in your your true heart. And that's how you're able to shine in the world. <sighs> Leah, oh my gosh. One millimeter movement. Mm. One, middle, m one millimeter. Sometimes we feel like we don't have the answer, but it's not that you don't have it. It's in you, but you can't access it because there's so much turmoil. But a one millimeter movement can help you to get clear so that you can access the dream, access the answer, access the next step. And sometimes all you need is the next step. You don't need the 10 year plan. One millimeter movement. Hey, friend, I'm just popping in to let you know that I have just a handful of openings on my calendar over the next three months for one on one coaching clients. If you are an accomplished woman who has found that you've lost your fire over time, if you have been successful doing all the things, but you just want to love your work again, if you're really good at what you do, but you know that there is more then you need to reach out. 
go to connectwithpbj.com. Sign up for a connect call. We'll jump on real quick. I just need to make sure you're a good candidate for my coaching program. And if so, we'll dig in together and I'll walk this journey with you. All right, y'all reach out, connectwithpbj.com. I look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, Dr. PBJ was a coach of mine in a coaching program and we had um, we had her support through the entire program, but we had one week specifically designated to mindset, which was kind of surprising to me. Like, why do I need this in a business coaching program? But you learn and you realize, and Dr. PBJ taught us that so much of it is in our mind. Um, I remember thinking that I like physically had to work and work through challenges um, in order to make my dreams come reality. But what Dr. PBJ taught us is that so much of the block isn't like a physical thing, right? It's a mental thing. And then once we're able to release ourselves from the mental blocks and overcome those and break down those walls, um, that's when we're able to prosper and that's how we're able to succeed and live out our dreams. So if you ever get a chance to work with Dr. PBJ, you must, you need to, you need her. She's phenomenal. So my friend, my sister, you went from homelessness to a hundred million homes. Mm. So you gotta you gotta finish this story. Because <laughs> <laughs> so this teacher, you sought within, you you questioned within, and then you started questioning externally. Mm. And you said, What do I need to do to get better grades? Mm. How do you get from that to Valencia Key Jewelry mm. and all the things that you're doing right now? Yeah. Well, you get there by um the one thing I must say, you cannot rely on external factors to get you where you know is for you to be. It's all literally inside of you. And I know you hear it a lot, but what, what I mean from it is we expect people to take us on our journey. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to say is going to be interesting because there are there are earth. I call them earth angels, but they're divinely appointed for you. Mm -hmm. But but it's your actions that allow the earth angels to connect you to it. And what happens is I notice we expect people to do things for us like, oh, you seem like you should help me here or I'm looking for someone to help me here. But you're you help yourself inside all the time and then when you're helping yourself inside and you're taking these physical millimeter movements and then you're praying your dreams and your prayers up and you're saying them out loud not for expectation you're just saying them literally i say when you say your dreams out loud you give them wings to fly mm -hmm. um then god appoints the right person that earth angel to take you one millimeter closer to your dream. So what that means is I literally start um, looking inside of me for everything that I want it to be, meaning action-wise first. You know, I want to be love. Like what I saw opposite of me was violence against each other, harshness, mm -hmm. negativity, um, all of the things of actions that I was like, that's not who I am and I, I want to be opposite. So first inside of me, I decided to be love mm -hmm. and I decided to be um, light, meaning all when I walk in a room, I'm fine looking for possibility in everything and everyone. And then I'm deciding to be kind to myself and others. And then when people see that, they gravitate to that because it's quite different, mm -hmm. sadly, right? And then, and then people, um, then I start to do things towards my dreams. So then I start to say, okay, I want to go to college. And then my mother said, which was interesting, oh, we can't afford college. 
yeah. I, I, sorry, can't go because I can't afford to get you there. And I'm like, ooh, but you told me <laughs> to leave. And so once you give somebody some power, now you're like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You pour from your own bucket. Uh-uh. That light inside of me that you told me was true said I'm going to college. So I don't know how it's going, but I, I don't receive that, mom. I love you. But I don't, that one I don't receive. And so I share that story is because you have to filter the message mm. for you. We start to take on everything that people give us. And it's, it's God, God is going to give you what's for you, right? But what we do is we, we start to allow man or human to be our mm. own source. And then we just start following the, the path of what someone else is supposed to be. God tells you what's for you and what's not for you. And yeah. our goal is to truly listen to that. And so my mother comes and she filters this thing from her bucket. The truth yes. we could, I, the truth was I could not go to college because the truth is we had nothing. That was her truth, but that wasn't my truth. So you got to listen to what other people's truth and then what's your truth. And so I'm always looking for my truth every time and i'm like my truth is college and i don't know how and but i'm going and all i'm gonna do is just speak it out i never ask people for anything Mm -hmm. but i'm just sharing where i'm going and i'm sharing i'm sharing and as i share where i'm going guidance starts to happen little light sources start to pop up to direct me to the counselor and then Mm -hmm. And then direct me to my aunt who tells me and then and then she says, oh, OK, I'll get you there. Like it's no brainer because the person, the earth angel that's divinely appointed to bless you doesn't have to be asked. They, you don't ask the person what it is. They know it's their assignment. They Come know on. it's their divine assignment. So as soon as they hear it, they attach to it. And what happens is when people hear things and it's not their assignment, it's still in their soul. Bob Goff, a wonderful uh, leader, shared that the human is designed to help. And so when your dreams are out in the world, people will, it will place somewhere in their memory bank. And as soon as a trigger connects to you, they think of you immediately and they're like, oh my gosh, Leah wants to go to college. I know um, a grant that's going to help Leah get to college. Leah, here's the grant. Now you got to go do the work. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, you got to, and that's just been the story of my life. So my life was this, um, looking inside, saying my dreams, being positive, even in every hardship, and then deciding what I'm going to be and allowing my life to be flexible in my dreams. Like my dream was to go to college. I went there, I I finished it. My mother always said complete. So I completed it. And then I start to decide, oh, I want to go into art. I got my master's in education. I I completed that whole thing, but I went inside again. I was like, but that's not for me. So that's why I like to share. Sometimes you're in a good place. Like a million in college is a good place, but um, academics at that moment wasn't for me. It was art that was for me and I knew it and I heard it very clear and it was the harder way to go because uh, the world said you get um, a salary doing these things. Mm-hmm. And art is a, a harder struggle and I'm like, oh, okay, I know struggle so that ain't bad. <laughs> I know that. Crap. So I start to um, do art through the form of um, hair and makeup and I went mm-hmm. all the way back cosmetology school, got my cosmetology license, swept floors with a master's degree. I love to share that. Don't humble, humble yourself that the journey will take you different places and you got to sometimes go to the valley to Come get on. to the top. <laughs> like, so you're like, I got a master's degree. Why would I sweep a salon floor? Because if, if your destiny is in that direction, then sometimes you got to do the things. And I was sweeping floors for a purpose. I wasn't just sweeping floors. I was sweeping a salon floor because in that salon, it was all about education and it was all about um, all culture hair care. So yeah. I'm an African-American woman and I wanted to not be labeled. Um, I wanted to be able to do all types of hair. And so I knew um, I wanted to be in that place 
with my friend saw my dream because I was living my dream. She saw me going to school and she said, oh, my friend has a salon. Let me connect you. That's how God does. When, when you're walking in your mission, even in the struggle, people see it. You've got to walk in the mission for people to see it. And that's the power. Sometimes we're waiting for someone to help us. But God wants you to literally walk in your mission, do the hard things for yourself. And just by you physically doing the hard things for yourself, someone's going to see it. And then they're going to take you to another journey. So I'm sweeping floors and I'm learning all types of hair. I'm making like $8 an hour under the table, but I'm learning. Um, this teacher just taught me everything. And then I was exposed to a thing called QVC. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, what is that? I never knew what it is. And it was a 24 hour, it is a 24 hour television show where they're, sh they're broadcasting to homes all across the world selling products and gifts. I'm like, oh, it's got to be a salon in there. I don't want to be, I saw what salons are. I'm like, I don't want to be a salon stylist. I want to work there, like specific. So my next thing is like, be specific about your dreams. Mm -hmm. It can't be, I, I want to be a stylist. That'll keep you loose in the air, just floating. <laughs> you know, like you don't want to be a float. You want to define your dreams so clear because then everything you do, even if it looks like it's outside of that, is focusing toward that. So then I realized, like, I want to be a QVC stylist, period. Now, from that statement to when it happened was at least five to six years. Yeah. So I like to share that when you define your dream, it's not going to happen automatically. It could. You're blessed if it does. But don't give up watching the Oscars yesterday and um, one of the winners, gentlemen, he was a child, um, a child actor and he didn't get an Oscar until now. He looks like he's in his fifties or something. He's older now. Right. And, and it was this 20 year gap between and don't give up on your dreams. You have to do things in between to survive. Yeah. But as you're doing your thing to survive, never give up on your dream. Never just put it down. Keep doing the little millimeter movements towards your dream, even when you just got to work this thing to put food on the table. Or even if you've got to deal with these people to <laughs> finish college or whatever the case is, always have your dream so specific. So I targeted QVC in a really clear way. And it took me... Um, six years to get there. I got so many no's. I finally got my cosmetology license. I got no's so many times that I wasn't qualified. I even went um, to the studio one day because this was when there was no lots of security. And I'm like, oh, they need to see my light because every time people meet me, it's a thing. Like, they Come on. Right? And I'm like, oh, that's it. Oh, so my, my other key is keep trying different things. The way you don't give up Cause I, you know, I'm always giving up. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an expert at how to not give up. I, I, the way you don't give up is when the give up spirit happens, because mm -hmm. it's real. What else can I try that's different? It's still towards my goal, but it's different than what I've been doing. And if you keep trying, it's like a, it's like a Rubik's cube. If you keep changing the Rubik's cube a million ways, you're gonna get the lineup eventually, right? So I keep trying. Like I was putting an email in and this and that, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go in person. So then I go in person, and um, there's a gatekeeper, a security guard there, and he asked me, oh who are you here for? And I'm like, oh, I just want to give my CD back in the day. I'm dating myself to the, um, to the salon. And I'm like, there is a salon here. Right. And he's like, yes, but you need a name. And I'm like, oh, I don't have a name, but just the manager. And he's like, unless you have a name, you actually have to turn off and, and get off the premises. Like you don't belong here. And so at that moment, I'm weeping human tears because my spirit is broken again for the fifth year. But my inner whisper is saying, you're going to walk have that same man one day you're gonna work here and you're gonna work. and I share that story and I get emotional about it because something in your life whoever's listening all the things around you are saying opposite like everything is wrong everything's going wrong every 
there's no's. Everything you're trying is not happening. But what does your soul and your inner heart say? Because that's the truth. And if you and if you if you know truth and you recognize truth, you hold on to that truth and you keep going to try toward the truth. Because there are so many naysayers in the world. There are so many obstacles. And the only way you see people that do great things, parentheses, because everybody's doing great things, the fact that you're living and breathing and trying is great. But if you look at this celebration of what great things is, the difference is they go and keep going because they believe it to be true. Like um, my loving dear friend um, created the book, Believe It. Mm -hmm. Love her. She's amazing, so amazing, but just everything in here is that story on a times a million level of how believing is possible. But when you believe it so much, it creates an action. I got to keep going back to action. Believing is, you know, you're not believing when you're not doing an action. Ooh. You don't really believe it. If you haven't, mm. you don't do anything. And I believe in taking breaks. Don't listen to me because it takes me real long to get things done. Because I, I live in a peace state. So when something is not bringing me peace, I do step away from it a little mm. bit. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I choose peace over anything. Mm -hmm. My mother died way early. She died in her 40s. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think I, she didn't truly live. She was bound by fear. And uh, society stereotypes had bound her. She was able to speak this out, and I'm honored for that. But physically, she couldn't break out of fear and in a peace state. So I live in peace. So I take a moment, <laughs> like I ain't giving up, but I'm walk. I'm gonna step off a little bit, <laughs> you know. And then I come back, and now I have some more energy and some more power. So, so believe so much that it catapults you into another millimeter movement, which is an action movement. And I, I and, and so to speed this story up, I would just share this dream of QVC to everyone I know. And I didn't, I wasn't asking for anyone to help me do anything. I was saying it out because every time I hear myself say it, it made it so real for me that it had to happen. So then it would allow me to try another thing. And one day I'm speaking, um, I'm at a bartender to survive, I'm bartending. And um, it's just me and this gentleman and I'm serving him. And he said a couple sentences to me. So my next sentence is, I want to work for QVC because that was my thing. I tell everybody. And he's like, really? My friend works there? Let me see. Give me a number. Let me see. And I'm like, eh, OK. And, and say yes to all things positive. Mm -hmm. and another <laughs> key is like, don't count yourself out. I feel like in the world, like everyone puts these standards on things to, you got to have this to be this and you've got to already have done this to make that. Like, and so you have these society things that people say you have to do and be. And then what it leaves, if you're not working from your inner self, got to work in your inner self. You you start counting yourself out because you start looking at the boxes and you can't check any of those off. So then you're like, oh, I can't do that. I don't believe in boxes. Mm. I don't have to check any of those boxes. If God said it to be so, then I'm going to find the actions to do to make it so. Meaning the action was I got to get a cosmetology license. I, I yeah. got control over that. And start taking the control where you can take it. Because there's always actions that you can do. Do those little actions. And don't worry about checking the boxes off. And still put yourself in the position that you say you're supposed to be. So he says, "I'll uh, I, let me give you the person. So he sends me a text message. The, the person sends me a text message the next day who has never met me, Stephanie Humphrey. His name is Fred. I, and Stephanie Humphrey actually becomes, is like my dear friend, a sister now, which is divine. But um, your heart is more powerful than anything. 
Mm. How you are in the world is more powerful than any talent, skill, ability, and direction you can ever be. And and who you are to people will take you farther than what you can ever do. Yes. From my perspective. Yes. I'm your granted and blessed generational blessings that'll move you up and you don't have to be a nice person. But I'm saying coming from where I come from, I was never the best hairstylist, never the best anything, but I believe in being love. And and that has moved me around. So this man who had felt my heart in a bar told this human that never met me my heart and my light and had must have given it to them so pure that they wanted to help me. And so Stephanie texts me, didn't know me from anything. Here's the manager's name. Here's their number. Here's their email address. And oh, use me as a reference. Leah. So I, I'm going to pause just for a minute and then yeah. I'm getting out of the way. No. When you drove up to that security area, the man said, do you have a name? Oh, I didn't you, you didn't have a name. You didn't have a name, but you didn't give up. You went back to what you were doing, just kept speaking the dream, speaking the dream. And through speaking the dream, you didn't even say, okay, I've got to be at this place at this time because this is the only way that I'm going to get into QVC. You were minding your business, mm -hmm. doing your thing, but speaking your dream. And through speaking your dream, not only did you get a name, not only did you get a phone number, but you got a reference. Uh-huh. Is that not amazing? Yeah. yeah. Amazing. In that, I must say, you've got to be ready, though. So you're speaking your dream, right? What does your dream need? That's your job. Your job is to get the things done that your dream needs in the capacity that you can do it. Meaning my dream was to work for QVC. Now, my dream needed a cosmetology license for that to be so. I can control that. I'm going to work on that. Mm -hmm. and, and so you are doing everything. My dream needed to understand from my perspective what I imagined my dream. Because if I turned on QVC, it was a bunch of different people. My dream needed to know different hair types and textures and understanding how to apply me. And that's what my dream needed. Okay, I'm gonna go sweep floors in a salon and work on that. See, you gotta be working on what your dream needs. And then as you're working on what your dream needs, now you're speaking it out because when your dream catches, you have gotta be remotely ready. You don't have to be always ready. I don't believe, ain't no such thing as always ready. But you've gotta have been working on the dream to be able to be in the sphere of being able to catch the dream. So now I must admit five years, six years of no gave me five, six years of training. Because if I had gotten an interview five years ago, I ain't know nothing, right? Now I'm right, I didn't sweat fluids, I didn't blew, he even gave me classes. So now I have the interview through the lovely Stephanie Humphrey type. Check her out, Tech Life Steph on um, Instagram. She's magical. Um, and now these doors opened immediately. <laughs> I got the yes for the interview. I've been working for Matt Cosmetic. The manager happened, the new manager at QVC happened to work for Matt Cosmetic. I had been sweeping floors, learning all different hair textures. It gave me beautiful um, host with wonderful different hair texture as mine. And so I wasn't ready, but I have been training. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. And so I get there and but, but what what superseded everything in the interview was my spirit. It, it was my my willingness to be joy. It was my willingness to smile. I think the most simplest thing we can do to improve our spirit and our energy is smile when we walk in places, smile when you're home by yourself, <laughs> even when it don't feel good, smile changes the whole dynamics of the energy in yourself and in the room. It's magical if you look in a sea of people, count how many people are smiling. You literally can count how many people are smiling and some people aren't smiling because they're thinking and I get it, 
But if you understand what a smile does, it says I'm welcoming. I mean, it says I'm open. It says, it says I'm I'm see you. <laughs> it says all these different nuances that most people are looking for yeah. but don't do. And so um, I got that job, and that job in QVC exposed me to another. And this is my third light. I'd say you know I've had all these trickles of light, but the third big light was I was exposed to. Oh my God, just humans living out their dream, like host making people's dreams happen and business owners deciding that if you had a love and a passion and put it in a tangible product and really had love in that product, it will become life-changing in the receiver's hands. And I didn't even know from where I came from this was possible. I don't know how I thought businesses started. I really don't. But I didn't know like real human people from real random places were creating them. But I got to have these people sit in my chair <laughs> and got to talk that these are just humans like who mm -hmm. had passion and work real hard and dream and do and don't give up and fail and come back and go on air and see their numbers do really great. And the next time see their numbers do really bad. And then they show back up the next day. And I, I was exposed to this. So my, my next key is exposure is power. <laughs> exposure is transformative to your life. So whatever you want, go get exposed to it. Yeah. And it doesn't have to cost you. I think a lot of people pay a lot of money. I'm not saying don't pay money for training. I'm not saying that please pay money for training. If that's what you know to be true. But if you don't have the money, you don't have to pay money for training. Go look up Eventbrite and find a free activity of mind development workshops or meetings or something like that. And just get in a space of exposure. Yeah. And expo a, a space of exposure will turn so many lights on for you. Because you'll start to see what's possible that you didn't even know what was possible. And that's what happened to me. Um, two beautiful hearts found me. Um, and uh, Jamie Kern Lima, founder of It Cosmetics, her, her best friend, uh, Jacqueline Finlan, actually saw me first. They saw my light. And then Vicky Sai, founder of Tatcha Skincare, um, we were, I was in the salon, this light in a salon just with so much possibility. What I didn't share was my mother passed very early. I mentioned that briefly, but before she passed, she saw my light shining and mm -hmm. in a, in a, she start, she saw the trajectory of my change. And before she passed, she said that, oh, I see your light. I see you choosing your light. I see you leading. I see you leading into your own destiny. And it's beautiful. And she handed me over these little earrings and she said, um, now wear your earrings every day. And, and let them be a reminder because there's going to be times that you may not know that you still have light inside of you. You may The light may get so dim, but when you look at your earrings and you touch them, let them be a reminder that all of the beautiful light that is still within you and all you have to do is re-choose it, <laughs> right? That's so, that's so beautiful. It's always there. So, so that's beautiful for everybody. Whatever it is, it's all. it will never leave you. The light will never leave you. I don't care how dark it gets. The only way it leaves you if you allow it to never tap back into it. It'll stay there. It, it'll be there. It's waiting for you to tap into it. And you just need these trigger reminders to tap into it. And so I, from that moment, was hand sketching jewelry as therapy. My mother left this earth and um, I was sketching therapeutically for myself like what what would these symbols look like that will remind me and it was in a jewelry form and then when I walked into this exposure of explosion of light <laughs> of people just doing the thing I have realized that wow I've been hand sketching this and the last thing what I style beautiful women hearts what they would do is what earrings am I going to put on what necklace am I going to put on mm -hmm. And it, it was a seal of confidence. It was a seal of bravery. It was a seal of light. No, the, I couldn't go on stage with them. Their coach and their team couldn't go on air with them or impress me with them. But their necklace could. Their mm -hmm. earrings could. And I realized I had been drawing this. And my journey has been a journey from darkness to consistently seeking light. 
And how do I allow people to have wearable symbols that can go with them throughout life, no matter where they are, no matter what stage or what hardship or what celebration um, they walk in to have these symbolic things to be reminded to celebrate that they are light or to be reminded that there is consistent light. And I started um, seeing through Jamie and Vicky that it's possible. And they took me under their wing and took a stylist like me around the world with them literally and allowed me to sit in rooms that maybe a stylist wouldn't be invited into. And they would just have me sit there. And and um, so my next thing is like, if you have the ability to expose someone to anything, please do because it can be transformative to the world because their exposure unlocks this power that I'm able to speak to you on, right? Because it gave me creating Valencia Key is what I then realized that it was my next mission to create wearable symbolic, I call them pieces of joy. Um, Valencia means bravery in a Spanish slang dialect and key as we know is to unlock. And it happens to be my name, middle and last name, which is cool, but it defines unlocking your bravery, unlocking your life, unlocking your possibility consistently over and over again. And the wearable pieces are symbolic that if a young girl from a homeless shelter where society specifically says all odds are against her and out. And if you can wear my jewelry, if you can touch and wear whatever your prayers are, are possible. Ooh. It's it's physical proof. As humans, we need physical proof. Yeah. To know this is physical proof that whatever your prayers on, it doesn't have to be a dream. Maybe maybe you're praying for a family. It's possible. It's possible. Start rewiring which what that looks like for you, but it's possible. And sometimes we need those reminders to keep going. And that's my other way of always having that ability to keep believing to next. So allow me to make that millimeter movement. And that's where we are. And PBS did a 26 minute episode on Valencia Key, my jewelry brand, um, 2020. The earrings were in Oprah's Favorite Things magazine, QVC, after three years of dreaming to have my jewelry on QVC, a big competition came out. And I had spoke that dream in the world. Everybody that would listen, I'm like, I want my jewelry on QVC. Now you would say, oh, she's in the QVC salon. Isn't it easy? No, it's actually harder because you're you're so far away from where the magic is happening. You're the front lines of the last touch up where it goes on air, but there's no connection of mm-hmm. church and state over there. And then it's a beautiful thing. There's not nepotism. And so it's really hard for me to have done that. But um, I shared my dream to everyone that would listen and I wanted my jewelry on QVC. It took me three years of just um, women showing up and wearing my pieces. They would meet my spirit and say, I wanna I want to wear that on air. <laughs> like that spirit, I'm give me the mirroring so I can wear it on air. I need a little bit of that. And they would wear it and shine their light. And then um, someone texted me three years later that QVC was having a big, big fine competition and that you've been saying it it's your time now and um i thought i'd like to share this in closing i thought um the first message came in and i was like oh i'm not ready so i counted myself out Mm -hmm. Um, someone's listening is counting their self out and um you have to listen to not so there's this you the brain the mind you which is beautiful and dangerous all at the same time. Cause the mind is meant to protect you. It's the methodical, it's the, it, she's, she's, well, she's there for you in a sense, but sometimes she censors things through a protection filter that could be skewed, <laughs> right? Or she's taken in a lot of things from the world that could be skewed and, and she's processing it through a processing lens of experiences and things. So it's, it's a beautiful thing, but it can also be a dangerous thing. We, I was just at a, a magical dinner yesterday. My friend Desiree, she's an on-air for It Cosmetics. Um, she exposed me, princess of Zambia, how cool mm-hmm. is that? 
sitting there. Um, City Hall, she came to speak. And um, then we had dinner afterwards. And the table was so beautiful. So it's the Princess of Zambia. It's a beautiful business woman from um, Kenya who's now here. It's an African-American beautiful woman who's the connector of all humans, which is magical. Then there's a, a Cantonese a, um, a, a Asian man who has the restaurant sitting at the table. Then there's a Caucasian man, Brian, who's whose great great grandfather helped with slavery. <laughs> and then there's um, another Caucasian man who's the marketing networking man. And then Desiree, she's Caucasian and this beautiful light in the world. And then there's me. That, and this is the beautiful table of just cultures eating together. Uh, but what happened was we start talking about truth. So get yourself in spaces of good conversation because that will should literally change your life. And what what came out was that um, what we're normally used to is um, censoring to the world yeah. and assimilating. And that happens in the brain because you always want to fit in, right? You want to, but I told myself when that first message came, I wasn't ready because myself was protecting me. My brain was, but my heart knew that it was for me, but then God sends another message. So this is what I want to say. You, God's not going to stop telling you it's for you. You can keep flying it away, but God, so God sends another message is like four days later, saying the same thing from a whole different human being, no connection, the same thing. And then that was my sign. Cause I'm all, I'm always in a symbolic symbol. Mm -hmm. like, there's always signs in the world telling you direction. And I'm like, Oh God, I'm not ready. Acknowledgement of the brain, but you say yes. So then I'm going to walk to it. And then I'm just going to read the application and I'm going to do a full out. Whatever the application says, I'm going to do a full out. And then I'm going to tap into my friends that help take me. And then I'm going to tap into my friend Marissa, um, who works, I think, for Josie Marinette, who, who helps curate stories. And I'm going to ask her to hear my story. And she starts to pan out my story. And so people will bless you, but you've got to have the ingredients, yeah. <laughs> right? And then I went for it full out. And then that moved into several um, auditions. And I finally got a yes for QVC. That dream that I had to be on QVC that I spoke in the world. And so if anything I leave you with is um, dreams do come true. I'm, I'm sitting in a middle space now where I want my business to grow and I'm, I'm having challenges, you know, with sales and growth and, and that understanding, cause I'm not a business person. I'm a creator and I'm being vulnerable and transparent. I'm in a space of um, where the world, if I statistic, if I look at my business from a statistics standpoint, from a world standpoint, mm -hmm. I should give up. <laughs> right. But my inner heart is saying the same thing that it said for QVC. And it's like, you've got a blessing to give to the world. And it, it's in this form of tangible pieces, but it's a blessing to give to the world. So I'm going to listen to my same message and I'm going to just keep doing the Lamina movement. So I pray that you join me in whatever your life journey has for you to do your millimeter movement says. And we just, Ooh. our goal is to shine light consistently through everything, even in the hard things, be light. And it's going to inspire someone else to be light with us. Thanks so much. <laughs> Leah Valencia Key. Let me say something to you because I do recognize that when you are the light, when you are the love, when you are the encourager, Sometimes we don't pause long enough to receive it for ourselves mm -hmm. because we're so busy pouring out to other people. Um, ever since the day I met you, I've been wearing Valencia Key. Yeah, my dream. And let me tell you why. I love beautiful jewelry. I always have. But your 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 jewelry is more than beautiful. In this season of my life where I am walking by faith 
in this dream and towards this dream and doing something that I've never done before. Your jewelry reminds me of why I do it. Wearing this jewelry, doing this podcast and seeing myself wearing Valencia Key reminds me that it's possible. Mm -hmm. It reminds me that I can believe. It reminds me that there's sparkle in me and not in, you know, just high flyy way, but in a very direct pierce my heart way of I have to show up because I have something to give. I gave my daughter and my nieces your hair jewelry mm -hmm. for Christmas. And I told them a little piece of your story because I want them to always know that they have choice and that the dream that God has put on the inside of them, mm -hmm. it will come forth if they keep taking steps that whatever they see is real. Whatever they see in their heart is real and it will come forth. So I want you to know that, and, and I love this, I'm going to say that I know we got to let the people go, but I always talk about the difference between purpose and passion, right? Yeah. I believe purpose is the innate, unique brilliance that you specifically bring to the world. And your passions are the expressions of that, like how you how you bring it to the world, how you the vehicle through which. So your purpose, Leah, your purpose is light and love. You are you embody every space that you are in is Field. It is undeniable. It is undeniable. And you have brought that light and love. You brought that light and love when you were sweeping floors. You brought that light and love through bartending. You brought that light and love through everybody has, who has sat in your chair to have their hair, their the glory, their hair and their faces made beautiful, more beautiful, be just, you know, accentuated. You, you brought light and love through Valencia Key Jewelry and even just your speaking and your presence, you express light and love in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to tell you that just as your testimony shows exactly what you see in your heart for Valencia Key, that's mm -hmm. what it's going to be. Amen. I receive it and um, thank you for that message because everything that you said is everything I pray for. And so um, my message, my, my prayers are answered. Yeah. Already. So if I'm looking at what society says, that's not what matters. It's what you just said, because that's why I created it. And so for that is everything that I dream of and pray for. And I have to keep spreading that because I want us all to keep going after what God has for us. Amen. And so thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Listen, friends, we got to let you go. But yes! oh my gosh, so I told you, I told you. So you all need to follow Leah. You all need to go to ValenciaKey.com and sell her out. Yes. Go buy her out. Um, and I'm, and y'all know I don't appeal in this way. I don't do this. But when I tell you exactly what you experienced through this, through hearing this woman's voice, is that, that's what you get as you wear this jewelry. Bless yourself and bless somebody else. Um, you, you have the power and the light of choice. And there's a dream on the inside of you that is literally God given. You didn't make it up. You're not wrong. No, nope, you're not, you're wrong. not wrong. You didn't make it up. You're not wrong. Yeah. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's not true. It's true. And one millimeter movement is how you're going to get there. Yeah. As always, you know, you are powerful, you are significant, and you are loved. Mm -hmm. Love always. PBJ. Love y'all.